Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Interviewing Wednesdays with our special guest interview speaker series. We're very glad you're with us today. It is uh, February 15th, 2023. Please note this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. For those people on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just put them in the chat window. Also, this is a great way to connect with other people who are on the call today. So if you'd like to put in your contact information, uh, reach out to everybody else who's on the call because you never know how, you know, Sue can help, uh, Sabrina can help Gary. Uh, just the names I see real quick, and there's Lisa and Shelly and Roger. So, you know, put your contact information in the chat window. That way you can try to help everybody else who's on the call. For those on Facebook, if you have any questions, please just put them in the comment field. I am monitoring that feed and we'll be sure to get that questions answered for you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who were unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Jobs, which you may not know. It is available on Amazon, or if you see me in person, I usually have calls with me all the time, or copies with me. Since 2017, I've been a member, I've uh, been leading and facilitating, 2007, facilitating the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, the group's been around since the late 1990s. We have a really interesting presentation coming up this Friday, and I'll tell you about that at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. You'll hear more about that in just a couple moments. Remember, your resume and your LinkedIn profile is not going to get you a job. What it will get you is a phone call, how well you practice your interviewing skills. That's what's going to get you your next job. You'll hear more about that in just a second. All right, well, uh, for the last six weeks, we've been uh, having special guest speakers. We've had Paul Walsh talk about behavioral interviewing, Gail Bridgman just talking about basic interviewing, Mark McDonald talking about competent candidates, lessons from the pit crew. Walt talked about distinctive interview. Last week, we had Tony Bashir talking about the 10 biggest mistakes in interviewing. Today, Jack Bick will be with us to talk about clarity when you need it most. But before we do, before we get to Jack, I just want to... Uh, let uh, Walt uh, introduce himself and tell us about the Interview Success Workshop. Good afternoon, Walt. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Interviewing Wednesdays. We should get an interview every Wednesday, right? Well, what is the Interview Success Workshop? I put that together back in 2000 when I flunked an interview. I mean, royally. So I had worked for 25 years and figured out that job search was not quite the same as it was 25 years ago. Some of us may have fit into that pattern today. But when I flunked that, I said, just what is it are companies buying? And I know that the interview is selling ourselves. And just what is selling ourselves all about? So I developed the three-legged stool of I am, I do, and I help. They're buying our soft skills, our characteristics, our personality. They're buying our activities, our knowledge, our hard skills, and our experience. And they're buying the value that we bring in the job. And so I'll put together this workshop to say, how do we combine who we are with what we do in order to provide value to them and how we can help? You have to be registered to attend. And all you have to do is take a picture of that QR code and it, it, you see the the uh, prose that's in on the slide that starts an email to me says I'd like to register for the workshop. You just have to edit a couple of things. Uh, what's your phone number? Where'd you learn about it? And I like to keep track of that. And I'll be glad to respond to you and give you some availability dates. Now, my typical days are on Tuesdays, 9 to 11 Central, but I also schedule other as needed. For in the last couple of weeks, I've had more because there's been a, a higher demand. So I've scheduled some extras. Be glad to have you participate. Now, what's the difference between this and a regular interview? Well, I call it the learning interview. Uh, we, we're here to learn. So it's a very informal environment. Yes, you will be interviewed. You'll get uh, questions out of the 12 basic categories. You will get a video of your interview. But you need not prepare. I'll take you for wherever you are. 
in your, with your interviewing skills. From, uh, I haven't interviewed in years, don't know anything about it, to, yeah, I've had several interviews and I'm, I know some things aren't working well or wherever you may be. The idea is to have some fun while we're learning. There's no need to have excruciating stress and be worried and not be happy because we don't look as good as we want to look and all that sort of thing. And so come on down, join us, and we'll have learning without squirming. Paul, thank you very, very much. All right, it's time to hear about the practice interview team. Good afternoon, Ron. So I'm Ron Layton. I lead the uh, pit crew. So what we do is we take the skills that Walt is going to help you more refine, and we're actually going to give you that mock interview with a panel of two to three coaches or panelists. Um, all of our coaches and panelists um, have been hiring managers in the past or may even be currently hiring managers. Um, the good thing, just like Walt's uh, interview success workshop, is it's absolutely free. I will ask, though, that you give us a minimum of two to three business days. It takes a while to put together these uh, these panels. So um, our goal really is to make you more confident and more capable in the interview so that people see what you can do for their company. Okay, Our motto is practice early, practice often. If you're out, you can have multiple interviews to make yourself get better as you go on. And we are always looking for panelists. Okay, we seem to be getting a little bit uh, light on those. And so we got a queue that's kind of building up. So if you know somebody that uh, can help with that, be happy for you to tell them about it or give them our number so that we can do that. All right. Um, also, the next thing to know is that starting in March, the first and the third Wednesdays, we will be meeting in person at the United Methodist Church in Plano. Um, the address is listed on the card here. We will not be doing Zoom those weeks. The second and the fourth Wednesdays, we will be doing it just like we're doing it here. So we're looking to get an idea of how many people are gonna make that either as a participant or as a panelist because we will be moving our interviews like those weeks to in-person. So if you could help answer this uh, poll right here, that certainly would help us understand kind of what to look for. Thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna leave the poll up for a little bit. Uh, there's three questions there. So we'd love you to be able, the first question is, are you a pit panelist or a participant? So if you're a participant, if you're a panelist, just click on panelist. If you're a participant, just click on that you've participated in the past or you'd like to be a participant. Uh, the second question, if a pit panelist, uh, you know, as far as would you be available to show up if you're a panelist? Uh, and then the third question down there is if you're a pit, you know, if you're a uh, participant, would you be available to show up? So if people will go and I'll leave this up for a little bit longer here, leave it up for another 20, 30 seconds. And maybe we could clarify, Ron, that a participant can be an observer as well as a candidate, right? Absolutely. So just what make sure everybody understands what Walt just says. So on those Wednesdays where we're in person, if we have an interview, you'll have the panel sitting at a table, the person getting the interview facing the panelist, and then behind the person interviewing, you can observe that and see what's going on, and at the end, provide feedback also, if you so choose. Oh, come on, Chris. You can't get on airplane. Southwest flies between Dallas and uh, Atlanta, you know, almost every hour on the hour. <laughs> also, Chris, if you could make sure you answer the poll so that we can see your numbers included in that, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. All right, we'll give it another five, six seconds, and then we'll be done here. All righty. Yeah, not when you're unemployed. Okay. Well, I guess it means you got you got to get a job with Southwest Airlines so you can fly back and forth for free, maybe. Okay. Uh, I will get the uh, Ron. I'll get you those results here after the session's over. Thank you very much. All righty. Here. Let's see here. Well, today our speaker is going to be Jack Vick. He's going to talk about clarity when you need it most. Jack is a uh, was a career coach. Is a career coach. 
He's been in the newspaper business for years and years and years. He's retired now. He moved from the DFW area down to Florida. And uh, when I reached out to him last week, he actually is back employed again, working for a newspaper down in Florida, helping them out. So uh, just because you retire doesn't mean you stop working. So uh, this is a pre-recorded session. It's about 40, 35, 40 minutes long. We will answer any questions you have at the end of this session. So please just put any questions you have in the uh, chat window. That would be really appreciated. So uh, here is Jack Bick. Uh, Jeff, thank you for uh, inviting me, and I look forward to uh, to working with everybody today and uh, learning a little bit more about how you can uh, successfully circum circumvent um, the confused and competitive situation that we have today. I. Um, Most of what I'm going to talk about today comes from my uh, my book, The Champion Way, uh, that's available uh, either through me or through uh, Amazon. If you come through me, I can uh, personalize it and, and autograph it for you. But what can you get out of what we're going to talk about today? The takeaways from today are very simple to have the right attitude as you go into a job search so that it can be a positive experience all the way from start to finish. Uh, building confidence, uh, developing tactics that you can use to save time and save money. It costs a lot of money not to have a job. If you make $50,000 a year, that's $1,000 a week that you're not putting in your pocket every time that you don't, every week that you don't have a job. So even if you don't do anything, it's costing you money. Um, and we don't want that. The average, uh, the average job search is 22 weeks. And for somebody making $50,000 a year, that is $22,000. That's a lot of money. So everything that, I, uh, that I'm doing is to make sure that we have, uh, we cut that, that time down to four to, six, four to eight weeks is the, what you should be able to do to get a job. So, the reason that we have to have the right attitude, it, it really comes from having clarity as to what the situation is. And that's what I want to talk about today, is the clarity that's necessary for, for you to start a, a comprehensive uh, career search. Now, we start with... The first one is outward outlook. The first thing you have to realize is this is not about you. If you center everything on yourself, you're not as attractive to employers. If you show an employer through the, the methods that you use to network to get there, to get to that person, and in the interview, if you show that you are oriented toward their problem and you are the solution, but you have to show that you are, you are oriented toward helping them to either make money or save money or solve a, solve a problem. This is not as easy as it sounds. But it's very important to do. The, the typical situation is that uh, people, uh, employers are going to interview about 10 people. And you can figure that one of those people is going to have an outward outlook. So if you want to compete with that person, you better have an outward outlook also. 
and you develop that by every situation you work to think of in terms of what does the other person need in order to hire you. When you, when you get that outward outlook, you'll see that people are responding to you and that will improve and make a, give you a positive attitude. Our second guide to a positive attitude and to clarity is to recognize the changing marketplace. Change is just as a constant in the world ever since the beginning of the world. There's climate change, there's chemical change, and that, that, those things have been going on since the beginning of time. But we also have see that there are trend lines and changes uh, even in the job market. It used to be that it, what you knew would get you a job. Then it changed to who you know will get you a job. And now it is who knows you well enough to recommend you. People are reluctant to, to recommend you unless they know something about you. They have to know you well enough before they'll be willing to put their reputation on the line to, uh, to reference you and to pass your name along. So it's a very important if you want someone to champion you, you have to develop and cultivate them as your champion. So the second thing is to recognize that it is people who know you well enough will help you in your job search. But you have to approach them from a standpoint of who they are, not your need, but their, their need to help you. And a lot of people will want to help you if you approach them the right way. The third aspect of clarity is to realize how much confusion there is in the marketplace. Much of that confusion is actually coming from the employers themselves because they are depending more and more on impersonal, um, non-contact ways of evaluating who you are. Now, I'll tell you, I don't like the idea that a, that a software is going to evaluate me, that a computer is going to evaluate me and decide whether I can have a, a, an opportunity to sell myself to a company. So to me, the next thing, the, what you want to do when faced with confusion is go around it. You can't, you can't beat it because it, it, that, that type of uh, interviewing is ingrained now, but you can avoid it. There's no need to go through an ATS. You can go around it and find a way to get to the hiring manager and avoid all the confusion that's part of the impersonal electronic ways that companies are trying to save money in the, in the uh, pursuit of finding people. I don't think you really find the right people. In fact, uh, Fast Company reported that between 30 and 50% of all new hires are failures. Now, I don't think that that's a failure on the part of the candidate. I think it's a failure on their process. And the, the process is putting the wrong people in the wrong spots. So you can improve your attitude and have a positive attitude when you realize that there are methods to get around the ATS. Uh, the fourth guide 
is the uh, fact that competition is higher than ever. Now, when I wrote the book, we didn't have COVID. I wrote it before COVID happened. Well, COVID has just magnified the number of people who are looking for a job. And what happens when jobs are posted, everybody runs to them. And I had one of my clients who <clears throat> applied for a job and she was the 18th person to, <clears throat> excuse me, to apply for that job. At the end of the day, she checked back to see how many people had applied. 1,800 people <laughs> applied for that job. And uh, it's very, very difficult for you to differentiate yourself when there's 1,800 people trying to get a job. And you think of the number of people who are going to be eliminated because they're only going to they're only going to interview probably ten, maybe twenty at the very most. So in order to develop a positive attitude, you must realize that by going after posted jobs and posting your your uh, resume on job boards is only going to get you in the middle of all that competition and just like with the confusion you can get around it you can decide what companies you want to work for and network your way in you've got a much better chance to get the job that you want when you choose the company and network your way in and research the company so that you have valuable information that can differentiate you from other candidates. The fifth uh, way to improve your attitude and make it a positive attitude is to realize that there's a reason for the time out. Now, I, I believe that God plays a very important part in our job search. In fact, God plays an important part in every part of our lives. But God invented j jobs, and he knows where your next job is. And sometimes he sends you an opportunity to reevaluate where your life is going not only with, with your job, but also with your family and your relationship to God. So once you realize that you have God on your side, that can improve your, your uh, attitude and, your, and make it a positive attitude. Number six is that your career is in your control. Now, if many people come to me uh, for coaching and they feel that they, uh, that it's out of their control, they don't have control of their career search. That, the reason for that is that once they send their uh, resume into a job posting, that's all you can do. You're, you're stuck. You're waiting to see if there's life on the other side of that ATS. And many times there isn't. You don't even hear anything. You think you're being ghosted, but really a, a machine has decided that they don't want to talk to you. Uh, you actually have control because if you personalize your approach, to um, your job search, then you have the opportunity to control the message. You can control when they're gonna get it, how they're gonna get it, and uh, you can control who's gonna get your message about how good you are at what you do. And another thing to think about here is that you're not looking for a job. 
you are actually looking to invest your skills and experience with a new company. That puts value on you. That puts positive nature on you. And like I explained in my first book, Be Mission Critical, you show that you are critical to their mission. Every one of us has value. Every one of us has God-given talents. And those talents are enough for us to be able to take care of ourselves and our families. If we realize them and we cultivate those, those talents and experiences and know how to present those in the marketplace. And we can do that because we control the message. So you can control your job search in a very positive way. Once you realize that, you have a positive attitude. Number seven, all jobs are temporary. Once I had a, uh, a, a lady in, my, in the audience when I was doing some group coaching and she said, well, I didn't have a temporary job. I was 30 years in the military. And I said, well, that's interesting. You spent 30 years and came out as a buck private? And she said, no, I'm a command sergeant major. That's a pretty powerful position. And so I said, well, obviously your job changed on a regular basis as you moved up the ladder. And we all have to realize that we have to accept the responsibility for our career. Nobody else is in charge of our career. Our career is not decided by external forces. Our career should be decided by internal forces within ourselves. The locus of control is within ourselves. We are in charge. Your boss isn't in charge. His boss isn't in charge. The economy is not in charge. The government is not in charge. You are. We've come through a very difficult year, yet we can see that people have been succeeding during this particularly difficult time. And a lot of people have found new jobs but companies have adjusted and many had to change what they were doing. And so they, they reacted. Remember number two was accept change. If you accept change, then you can understand things that need, are needed when uh, things are changing rapidly. Change just means that opportunity is shifting. You just have to realize where it's going and get there and show how your talents, your uh, gifts and your experiences are relevant to the, to the new change. So all jobs are temporary. And truthfully, when I, you know, if you realize that you are in control of, of your uh, destiny, that's a, that should be a powerful thing. If you think it, it, that something else is in control of your destiny, it's very hard to have a positive attitude. But you are in charge of it. And you can control it. The ninth guide is avoid postings, which we already have talked about, and embrace the hidden job market. The, the job, I, I really dislike that phrase, hidden job market, because if, if I have a company and I'm looking for an accountant, I'm certainly not hiding it. And so, my, my new uh, way of expressing it is the discovery job market. 
you have to discover it. You have to be active in the marketplace to find the companies that don't post their jobs. They do post them, but not in the in the way that is going to attract hundreds of resumes. Because there is a, a significant cost connected to going through a hundred resumes. Certainly a much higher cost if you have a thousand resumes. I remember when I first came to, t to Dallas, I was publisher of the Dallas Business Journal, and I had to hire a new business manager. And I put, uh, I naturally put a, an ad in um, my own newspaper. Well, I got 311 resumes. And I was putting off going through all those resumes because it's not fun uh, on, the, on the hiring side to go through those. And actually somebody was suggested to me through networking and I ended up hiring that person and never really going through the, the 311 resumes. And you might, might think that I took the easy way out because that person was presented to me, but that was in 1990. And that person just retired from the Dallas Business Journal a couple of months ago. So she was pretty good. She was, in fact, she was fabulous. Uh, and she made it through five different publisher changes. <clears throat> so, uh, so embrace the discovery job market. And what it requires is for you to really network out there and find the companies that you want to work for. When you do that, you can network your way in and find a way to, to present your mission critical skills and experiences to fit their job descriptions. And finally, number 10 <clears throat> is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, human nature is a constant. <clears throat> we, um, we react to various stimuli, the same as our grandparents and their grandparents and every human being ever since time began, we respond to personal contact. So if that's true, why would we want to go and submit ourselves to an impersonal uh, way of, of uh, being selected? Go around those things <clears throat> and allow your personality to be seen and have your skills and experience judged on a personal basis rather than an impersonal basis. Have it be where you are there to move your candidacy forward on, on a daily basis and develop champions who can do some of the heavy lifting for you. And you're much better off being a uh, selected candidate because somebody in the company suggested you than you are if you, uh, if you come through an ATS. Now there, Obviously, there are jobs out there that are posted that you may want. My suggestion to you, rather than sending in your resume, when you see a posted job you like, find champions. Go to LinkedIn. Find who works there. Network your way to those people. Get those people to really know you. And then uh, they will take your resume uh, in and uh, 
the, the other advantage of having a champion on the inside of a company where you want to work is that they can feed you information about how the process goes. You can have the inside information as to how they like your, re your resume to be written, uh, what kinds of traits they're really looking for, and also, and even most importantly, who the hiring manager is and what he is as an individual hiring manager is looking for. That's invaluable information. There's also a, a new uh, uh, new wrinkle out there where the um, hiring manager writes a 25 to 50 word uh, expression of exactly what he's looking for, the preferred person that he's looking for. Not all hiring managers want the same thing. And they're all individuals and they all have their likes and dislikes. And if you have a chance to, uh, to really know who the, who the hiring manager is and have some feedback as to what that person is all about, you're way ahead of everybody else. So I hope I've given you some information here that you can use to have a positive attitude as you enter into the job search process. Remember that process should not take more than four to eight weeks, four to eight weeks. Now, what I'm gonna, uh, I've, I've hinted at what I think the process should be. But let me give you some ideas and give you some clarity as to what this is all about. To me, a job search is a marketing problem. You have to market yourself. <clears throat> One time I had an engineer come to me and said, he said that he lost out on a, on a plum job that he really wanted because, uh, and he knows that he knows the guy who got the job and he knows that he's a better engineer than the guy who got the job. I said, you may be the better engineer, but he's the better marketer. He marketed himself much better than you did. So it's a marketing process. First, you have to start with knowing the product. You are the product. You are what is being sold. So you need to get a real grasp of who you are. What makes you tick? What are the things that you've gone through? Why did you pick certain jobs? And um, in, my, in my new book, I've got almost 100 questions that you can ask yourself to really find out who you are and what it's all about. Now, why would you want to know that? Uh, we, you know, we live with ourselves all, all the time. So don't we know each other? Don't we know ourselves already? Yes and no. We forget things. We forget things that have happened to us, especially things that aren't uh, so good. We push those to the back of our mind. We really need to have those at the front of our minds when we're going into a job search. We also underestimate ourselves. We fail to connect the dots and we rationalize. So we are, we are actually, let's admit it, lying to ourselves and that's not a healthy situation we really need to know ourselves deeply and once we really know ourselves deeply we can write star stories that have impact that are viable and brief uh, so 
doing a deep dive into who we are is very, very important for us to be able to write the star stories. And we all know, no matter what process you're going through, star stories are the foundation of any job search. Those success stories tell our story very, very well. The second thing you have to do, once you know the product, you, you have to know the audience. This is a basic in terms of marketing. Any marketing company has to know the product and they have to know the audience in order to do an effective marketing job. So the second thing is choose your companies and uh, market your way in. I suggest having five companies that you want to target. Now, the advantage to that is that you can dis differentiate yourself because you do some deep, deep investigation and research into these five companies. You're at a great advantage over anybody who only knows these companies on a surface level. By you choosing and, and defining the five that you want to work for, you have an advantage because when you walk in there, you say, I want to work for you. Not because there's a job available, but because your company is where I can best invest my skills and experience. And when you have deep research into who you are and who the companies are, you can write better resumes because you know what the target is and you know what information you want to put in there. It's very important to have a, a, a resume, what I call a selling resume, that covers the highlights of your, of your um, career. You don't need everything in order to get an interview. You may need to tell them everything about you in order to get the job, but you don't need everything. It's the highlights that they're going to get interested in and want to know more. Telling them everything can actually be a disadvantage. So the way that you put together your resume so that it will be a point of differentiation. So that once you know the product, once you know the audience, and once you have started into your marketing materials, uh, starting with your resume, you can go in and really do a good job of networking your way into those companies. If you're trying to network your way into 20 or 25 companies, you're not gonna do a very deep job of it because they're just in time. But if you're concentrating on five companies where you wanna work, then you have a very, it's, it's a great opportunity for you to make a deep impression and get that job. The last thing, after you enter into the marketplace, after doing all that research, is selling. And really selling your way into a company during the interview. I call it the conversation. And what's important in the conversation is for you to ask questions. You should ask a question to get the conversation started. You should be asking questions throughout the interview. And at the end, you should be asking questions so that you know exactly where you stand. If you walk away from an interview and you don't know exactly where you stand, you're you probably didn't make a deep enough impression. You have to know for sure. So you want to ask them. My favorite question is to say, do you see me in this role? 
and the guide that I give, I give to all of my, uh, my clients in coaching, the underlying idea is that if you're not the top in the top three before you go into the interview, you're not going to get that job. Because you've got, you not only have to do a good job in the interview, but the other, the top three have to, have to fail. And that's not likely to happen. One maybe might fail, but having three of them fail in order to boost you up to number one, probably isn't going to happen. So you have to differentiate yourself through marketing, through research, through networking, through doing, uh, you know, hundreds of little tactics that are all explained in my book that uh, in order to get, be in the top three before you ever go into, um, <clears throat> into that interview. Jack, if you don't mind, Bill asked, uh, how do you know if you're in the top three? Well, you have, you know, because you are, you are doing the things to differentiate yourself. You're not doing things exactly the same way every, everybody else does, but ultimately you ask. And if you have champions inside that company, they can ask for you. Sean asked, uh, how do you convert LinkedIn, a LinkedIn stranger into a champion? Well, you start at the beginning. The first thing I said was outward outlook. So you look and, and decipher things about that person that you can use to make a connection. You know, I have a thing called the communication formula, and it's very simple. It's you connect to the other person before you want them to connect to you. In other words, you show a concern about, you know, or an interest in their job, how they're doing it, uh, their activities, their hobbies, their, their pursuits, before you ever expect them to be interested in what you have, you're interested in. Just a few words. What do you think the most important thing is in, in interviewing? The most important thing in interviewing is ask questions. When you go in and make your opening statement, you end the statement, that statement with a question that will get the conversation going. During the conversation, the middle part of the uh, interview, you, um, you wanna be asking questions to clarify and to show your interest in doing a good job. And then at the end, you wanna make sure that you ask questions so that you know exactly where you stand and, and end with that very important question, do you see me in this role? Could you uh, go over your 10 point, your 10, one, two, three, 10 points real quick and just Okay, very quickly here, uh, develop an outward outlook is number one. Number two is recognize the changing marketplace. Uh, number three is um, confusion, which is a disconnect from reality. Number four is competition is higher than ever. Number five is there is a reason for a timeout in your life. Number six, your career is in your control. Number seven, all jobs are temporary. Number eight, a very important one, all companies are hiring. And number nine is embrace the discovery job market. And number 10, human nature is a constant. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Michael asked, how, uh, what's the difference between the new book and the old book? 
The, the first one is basically what to do and how to do it. The second book is what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and why to do it. And, there, and there's probably 20% more uh, checklists and, uh, and ideas in the second book than the first book. All right, that is Jack's presentation. Uh, hopefully everybody picked up a few tips and stuff there. Anybody have any questions? If you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask away. Uh, Walt is with us, Ron is with us. Everybody here is offered, to, you're offered to answer any questions or you know, any advice. Questions, questions? All right, well. If there is no questions, we'll just move on then. Okay, if you want to connect with uh, Jack Fick, you can, you're welcome to do so. Here is his LinkedIn uh, profile. Be sure to send him a personal note. Let him know that you saw him here today uh, on Interviewing Wednesdays. He knows we were doing this today, but he was not able to join us because, like I said, he has gone back to work after retiring. He's gone back to work for a newspaper in uh, the Florida area. Let's see here. Uh, Career to FW Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us. Tomorrow uh, being the third Thursday of the month, we're going to talk all about effective resumes, communicating your story through your resume. Andy Cook, she's a crown straightener and life coach. I love that crown straightener bit, uh, but she'll be with us to talk about how to, you know, how to take your story through your, explain your story through your resume. This Friday, a really interesting presentation. Uh, we're going to talk all about Crystal Nose uh, with Patty Beshi. Uh, in fact, Patty's on the call right now, uh, but a really interesting presentation. This is a great tool to figure out who, what kind of person are you talking to? It's a combination of using LinkedIn and using this uh, add-on to look at somebody and, and sort of come up with some great questions. So Patty will be sharing that with us this Friday. I would recommend, you know, come take a look. Uh, this could be a very interesting tool that can help you out. Uh, next Tuesday for LinkedIn Tuesdays, Ruth Lips will be with us to talk about how to drive recruiters to your LinkedIn profile. And this session was recorded. It will be on the Career FW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel. Um, on the Career USA YouTube channel, one of the things you'll find is our 13 part workshop. Uh, we actually will be starting this next week. So next week, we're going to do lesson number one, preparing to be interviewed and how employment recruiters work. So join us next uh, uh, Wednesday. Now, it's if we don't have a real interviewer, to, if we have a real interview to do, we'll do that first. But if not, we'll be doing lesson number one. The way these 13-part workshops is laid out is the first five sessions or everything you need to do before the interview, how to prepare for the interview, star stories, analyzing the job description. The next five sessions are all about what do you do during the interview? How do you handle things? How to build enthusiasm? How to you know, ask questions? How to build rapport with the interviewer? And then the last three are some advanced topics. So over the next several weeks, we will uh, be sharing those uh, on the second and fourth. Uh, and there's actually a fifth, Thursday, uh, fifth Wednesday in the month of uh, uh, March. But uh, we'll be sharing those when we are uh, doing when we're live uh, on the Career USA YouTube channel. Just click on playlist. The most important thing: click on playlist, and then down bottom, pick whichever list you want. And down where you see that red arrow, click on view full playlist, and then up will come a list of all the different uh, titles, and you can go back and scroll through and watch any of those that you'd like to at your convenience. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, please join the Career USA mailing list. Just send an email to Career USA, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io. Uh, you'll never be spammed, but what you will get is every day the title of the day, the topic of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. That way you can that way you can uh, just open the email and watch our be part of our program. Uh, please remember, Career at FW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. All of our speakers are volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 14 years has just been to help you land your next great opportunity. So please 
you know, consider making a donation when you land your next job. Thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. Have a great Wednesday, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow or Friday.